Welcome back to my channel, everybody. Before I continue, for some reason, my footage of the beginning of this garment got corrupted and I can't use it. So I will do the intro real quick right now and then I'll just quickly go over the beginning steps of what I did to this garment. And once again, this is not a pattern. This is, this is kind of like a visual tutorial. Everything should be based off of your measurements. And I only use two or three stitches tops in usually all of my garments. This one is no exception. Everything is either half double crochet or it's a basket weave or you're just doing triple crochet cables to create like an X effect and that's it. Everything else, do it to your measurements. And yeah, don't forget to like and subscribe to this channel. Once again, don't forget to like and subscribe to this channel. This channel is evolving for you all. I will be including my daily vlogs of things going on in my life, some healthy cooking and some fitness videos as well. I'm gonna show you guys everything of what I'm capable of doing and not just crochet. No spoilers, you're gonna have to see the end of the video to see the rest of the garment. But for right now, I wanted to create a garment that I already played with a collar and I played with V-necks and I've also played with normal collars that reach kind of like here not too big. This garment, I wanted to challenge myself and I wanted to try for the first time an overly large neckline, neck hole. So this one for me, usually I have a, or I can just measure right now. I grab another one of my projects. You can see this video also on my channel. Go ahead and check it out. I should be linking it here. So normally with a neckline, I will measure usually 11 inches wide. But for this one, I went, I believe this one is, it's about 15 inches as opposed to 11. So I did add about four inches more to that. Do your math however you want it. I always do half double crochet on the collar to keep it nice and tight. I usually go down a hook size as well because the neckline should always be nice and crisp and clean. And to get those clean lines, you have to get kind of like a tight tension going on. And then everything else, I just increase. So whenever you want to increase, someone gave me this tip, increase by 10. So count how many stitches you have. And I usually put three between each section. So that's one section. And so I usually fit in three stitches in there. And then I measure or I add them all together and divide by 10. I always round down, I never go up. I'd rather get fewer stitches increasing than more because then that's when it starts to ruffle. So there's a little tip right there. And yeah, so from here on out, I'll be able to do the video normally, but I just wanted to get out of the way the intro of how to do the collar because everyone's always asking me. I'm not gonna tell you how many stitches it is. Measure yourself, measure, measure, measure. Go by measurement because everything always changes. Some people's necks are thicker, some people's necks are skinnier. Go by the measurements of what you feel comfortable doing and what you want the garment to be. Because this one can be a short neckline or big, doesn't matter. But anyways, let's continue on with the video on how to create this beautiful X cable. Okay, cool. So I don't know if this technique is going to work, but I am going to record now just in case it does. I already frogged this once and I forgot to record. I spent six hours on, a, on the yoke. So I'm technically inventing this as I go. <laughs> I don't know if this exists before. I'm literally combining two techniques, cable and ribbing. Now, if this works correctly, once I make the next couple rows, you will see an X. All right, hopefully I'm doing this correctly. So I'm gonna show you what I'm doing. So I'm gonna show you how to end it and then also begin it. So right now I'm closing this. I just finished doing one rib going this way and then I came back here and I started to add in the stitches. Uh, so since I also increased in this row, I am going more based on the straightness of the first ribbing. So once it reaches here, cause some of them have four, some of them have five, just because of the increase of the row, that's the nature of it. Wherever it lines up, I'm gonna do one, two, three, Four, there should be four. One, two, three, four. On the fourth one, which is right next to where the other one ends, which is why I wanted to show you. So you're gonna go ahead, you're gonna pull it in. Oh my God, I just messed up. <laughs> Here we go, ready? One, two, three, four. Okay. Pull it back here. Okay. Cool. Bring it in. Cool. All right. So now here you're going to take your time and you're going to go two stitches at a time. One. Go through two. Two. Go through two. One more. Go through two. And then on the last one, bring in all three. And this is just to keep a relaxed stitch because I did this already 
four times before. <laughs> I did this four times before, and I can tell you that the looser it is, the better the effect it's going to be. Trust me. So creating this X cable, as you saw me struggle, was a big, big struggle. But I will only say that disclaimer because it was the first time I ever did it. Now that I have done it and I understand how these uh, triple crochets work, this is all triple crochet. And you just have to know with double loop, double yarn over. And you just play along with it all the way around. Look at that. Beautiful, right? Starbucks hit me up for some coffee while I crochet. <laughs> now I'm not going to be cutting. I'm just alternating between the colors of red and brown. And then I'm going to start on the basket weave stitch for a little bit. But I wanted to transition the colors a little bit. So that way the brown starts coming into play a little bit more in the middle. Me Rose. <laughs> Go follow Rose likes crochet. Um, quick update. I just began the basket weave stitch. So I already did the foundation and I did a couple stitches. So that way I can show you and you can visualize what it's looking like. And all I did in the middle was I did three rows of red, one of brown, two of red, just to break up that color. So that way as your eyes are going down to the texture and the color, you get a little bit of a brown and it's, it's going to give everything a little bit of a cohesiveness to it. So yeah, I fixed the issue. So I undid it and I increased correctly and now it doesn't ruffle as bad. I mean, it still ruffles, but that's just because I discovered it's because of the X stitches. The cables is always going to be pulling it in, but um, I have did my math. There is sufficient amounts of stitches. It is not, I didn't do too many. And my math worked out right. It's, this is just because of the cabling on the X, scrunching it together. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Share this channel, guys. Uh, let's get this channel to 4K. And let's also aim for a goal of 100 likes on this video. Can we do that? So right now, stop right now, like this video, and also subscribe. And make sure the bell says all for notifications because I do go live pretty frequently and you will be able to join me and know right away when I'm live. You'll get a little ding ding on your phone. So real quick, uh, the, I just finished doing the yoke. Pretty happy with how it turned out. Now what I normally do when I want to separate, I fold it in half like this. For my personal measurements, seven inch sleeve is perfect for me with a 18 and a half inch body. And so after you measure and you stitch mark it, you're gonna go ahead and open it and just grabbing it from the sides, you're gonna hold it up to you and you're gonna see if there's any inconsistencies in the sense of you probably pulled it too much on one side than the other. And you're gonna see ruffling on either one side if it was uneven. If it's not, then you're fine. But if it is and you just counted a little bit off stitches, like for me, I was off a couple stitches because now it's perfectly smooth when you pick it up and when you lay it down, which is what you want to avoid. Unless you know that you have a huskier back or something, then you can add a couple stitches. Here's the customization part. So if you know that the person has like a larger chest or something, you can definitely maneuver this uh, divider to be to give you a little bit of leeway. So I have a dilemma. I don't know if I want to allow it. So I started up the second hank of indigenous excellence. And it is starting to pool, unfortunately. Well, fortunately and unfortunately. I would have loved for the pooling effect to have happened throughout the entire garment. Originally, I thought the yarn would never pool. But now that it is, what do you guys think? Should I leave it on or should I take it off? Sorry, I'm sorry. I'm kind of bouncing around here. Hi, Yarn Geek. And the cat, she loves to watch the yarn move. Oh my god. Shout out to Yarn Geek real quick. I'm about to watch your new video. I got an alert. Which is always nice when you're crocheting because time goes by so slow when you are in the middle point of a garment. Does that make sense? I'd rather be at the end or the beginnings. <laughs> From far away, it's going to look like a separate part of the garment, which I'm totally fine with. Distinct the changes, but we'll see. 
I am hoping that everything, I'm trusting the process. So we'll see as we go. That looks cool. <laughs> that looks cool, right? Option, so, um, I checked my local Joann's. They don't have the Hue and Me yarn yet, which is sad. Joann's, get on it. The yarn release today should be on the 10th, right? <laughs> I tried to go get the yarn. I didn't get a PR package or anything like that. So uh, I don't have early access to it and I don't want to order it online because I'd rather, I want to see the colors in front of me and see what I want to pick. I'd rather just drive the 20 minutes to my Joann's and see for themselves. But I did ask, so I got to go back next week. They said they'll get it in probably next Thursday or Friday. But anyways, sleeve is coming along really, really well. And it's pooling, so great. It'll bring the whole bottom part of the body, I believe, together. And I did start last night with a new technique, guys. Look, I'm doing some surface crochet. Can you see that? So I added some of the brown here. It's gonna be about a couple rows, one over, one under. Um, I just want it going across because I think hopefully the idea, uh, it should separate where it's pooling and where it's not. So that way you can actually see that it's a, a separation of the garment. We'll see. I'm just playing along with it. I always wanted to surface crochet anyways for to prepare myself for the Karen cake cake off contest. Uh, but yeah, let me finish the surface crochet. And then I just gotta finish the other sleeve and then we are officially done with this garment. Oh my God, you guys, we are officially done with this sweater. This took me longer than I wanted, but it was just because I had to figure out this technique. So I think in total, it was about five days that it took me to finish this. And it's just all half double crochet, guys. Everything is all in one piece, half double crochet. This is just practicing cable technique. So you can see, I can put my finger underneath. Brown. I took away the surface crochet because I'm not skilled yet. And it took a long while. I'll update you when I add it into it. But for right now, I made it too tight. And so I have to figure out my tension and stuff like that. And I want to end this video <laughs> because it's been five days. All right, let's do the grand reveal, shall we? So our final thoughts for today, this, once again, this yarn is from Knitted Wit. This is her new September Her Story colorway, representing the first uh, Native American actress to win an Oscar. The actress from Roma, this is what is inspired by her. I love it. And this brown one is also from Knitted Wit. This is called Wind Caves National Park. I know this type of yarn is uh, pretty expensive. So don't worry, enjoy these videos. These videos are not meant to force you to buy any of the yarn that I show you sit back relax enjoy the process and just have fun so if you can't afford it that's okay take the design take the de if you have yarn that kind of looks like this go for it you can use whatever yarn you want as long as you i'm just here to inspire you and show you what uh types of stuff that i come up with so don't feel pressured i know there's lots of comments <laughs> below saying that this type of yarn is expensive but that's not the point the point is to use what i have I enjoy that type of yarn every once in a while, and I hope I can motivate you to create the design. It's not about purchasing the yarn or any products that I use. It's all about the design and the art of crochet. Also, if you have been using my uh, business email to sign me up for newsletters on crochet subscription boxes or whatnot, please don't do that. My email is meant for business purposes only. That stuff, I can sign myself up if I want to. But for right now, I like to know what I buy in terms of my yarn. And I go to my local yarn shop and I support my local yarn shop here in Chicago, Illinois. Shout out to Yarnify. So yeah, shout out to Bear from Yar Yarnify. Look, I finally, it's because, so in my local yarn shop, every time I go in, I tell them that I'm creating things. The great thing about YouTube is that you guys force me to finish these projects so I can show it off to you. And so every time I go to the yarn shop, <laughs> I tell them, oh, I'm working on this, but I frogged it. I didn't like how it came out. And so now I'm actually finishing these projects. And there was one designer in the yarn shop who she makes these big necked, uh, drapey, oversized pullovers. And she inspired me to do something like this. I never done a neckline this long or this big, but I really, really like it. 
and it looks so chic. And so thank you so much, Bear, for inspiring me to do something like this. And yeah, so all information is in the description box below if you want to know where you can purchase this yarn or what yarn shops have it. And I'll see you guys in my next video. We are finally, finally almost done with the Lion Brand yarn. So stick around. The next couple videos are going to be from Lion Brand, the Date Night yarn, and the Fisherman. So stay tuned for that. Those are finally done. But for right now, I at least have a new sweater I can wear while crocheting and creating these new looks. So thank you so much, everybody. And enjoy the next video.